Hi, good morning. We are going to discuss today about the test to closer or exit criteria. This is one of the last phase in software testing life cycle. From this session, we are going to learn what is test to closer, advantages of it, who will decide when to stop testing for a project, if a agile process, who is going to decide? If traditional model we are following to develop the application, who will decide these things? What are the factors will be considered to stop testing? What are the test to closer deliverables like test to closer report, test to metrics? These are the things we are going to discuss. What is test to closer? Test to closer is a memo that is prepared prior to formally completing the testing process. Before formally complete testing process, one document is going to prepare. Okay. Or we can say test to closer is a document that gives a summary of all the tests conducted during the software development life cycle. It also gives a detailed analysis of the bugs removed and defects found. What is the advantage of this test to closer activity? The idea is to remove the process bottlenecks. Bottlenecks means which factors degrading the process activities, those things for future test cycles and share best practices for any similar projects in the future. When the software test to closer activity comes after requirements analysis, test planning, test case design or development, then test environment setup. After test environment setup, test execution. After execution, we have the test to closer activity. So at this level, requirements analysis, test planning, test case design or development, test environment setup, then test execution, test closer. Who will decide when to stop testing for a project? Generally, once execution completed, defects are resolved, reported, developers are resolved, then they go for the this kind of activity. Who is going to involve here testing team? Testing team will meet, discuss, and analyze testing artifacts. Testing artifacts means project related documents. Testing related documents it can be defects, templates, defect documents. So, test cases, review reports, requirements, traceability matrix. Like these are the different testing related documents to identify strategies that have to be implemented in the future, taking lessons from the current test cycle. So testing team will meet, discuss, and analyze the testing artifacts to identify strategies that have to be implemented in the future, taking lessons from the current test cycle. Suppose if it is an agile process, development application product owner and scrum master who are the responsible to go for test to closer activity if you go for traditional sdlc model like v model waterfall model this kind of model is project manager and a test manager so along with test lead they are going to be involved in the test to closer activity Project manager, test manager. Project manager, test manager. Sometimes what will happen, some projects, only project manager will be there. There is no test manager. In the test lead, project manager, test manager, test lead. Three members are going to be involved. Which factors will be considered? Or when to stop testing? Or what is exit criteria? One of the difficult one to determine it is 
lot of factors to be considered. In the majority of the factors are satisfied, then we can stop the testing activities for the project. That's what I give again. Okay? This can be difficult to determine to stop testing activities for a project. Modern software applications are so complex and run in such an interdependent environment that complete testing can never be done. This exhaust testing is not possible. But what are the common factors to be considered to stop testing activities for the project means? Deadlines. That means release deadlines, testing deadlines. So test cases completed with certain percentage passed. That means 95% of test cases are passed. Now we're going to pass 100 percent at least the majority of the test cases are passed 95 percent test budget depleted that means when budget overflows coverage of code or functionality or requirements reaches a specified point so majority 95 to 97 percent coverage is completed bug rate falls below a certain level that means customer said that if two personal defects are there i can accept my project make sure the bug ratio should be less than two percentage when beta and alpha testing period ends so the time is depleted then also a problem these are the factors to be considered to stop the testing activities for a project What are the documents are going to be there for the test closure time? Two documents. One is called test closure or test summary report. This is one of the documents, then test metrics. The first one test closure. So these are the components are going to be there in the test summary report or test closure template. Like document controls, revision history distribution list and document review, introduction, project description, object to scope, in scope, what are the testing activities are covered in the current project, what type of testing activities are not covered under current test project that is out of scope. So additional fun functions or features that were tested, test results, test execution details, that means cycle one execution, how many are passed, how many are failed, like this. In a variance to original test plan, quality of software, test coverage and results, defect metrics by defect type, defect metric again by defect status, outstanding issues, exit criteria, then knowledge maintenance, as well analysis and resolutions, lessons learned, best practice and adopted and new improvements implemented. Like this, this the information is going to be provided by the test summary report. Okay, this document has to be prepared by your test manager. Next one, we have the test metrics. Software testing metrics is defined as a quantitative measure that helps to estimate the progress and the quality of software testing process. So to estimate process and the quality of software testing process, we have the four types of test metrics. One is test coverage, then test execution coverage, test efficiency, then defect leakage. If I go for test cover, generally these metrics are going to be calculated in terms of percentage. The test coverage means it measures the most of the test amount of testing performed by a set of tests. It measures the amount of testing performed by a set of tests. How it is going to be calibrated means test coverage is equal to number of test cases prepared divided by number of test cases required multiplied with 100. Next one, test execution coverage. To know that how much application covered with written test cases. How it is going to be estimated 
test execution coverage equal to number of test cases executed divided by total number of test cases prepared multiplied with 100. Test efficiency. Difference between the number of defects found by the testing team and the overall defects found for the software. The test efficiency, number of bugs accepted, which you reported, total number of bugs reported multiplied by 100 is. Defect leakage. Defects missed from one level of testing to next level of testing is called defect leakage. Defects missed from one level of testing to next level of testing is called defect leakage. How it is going to calculate it? Defect leakage is equal to number of defects found in production divided by total number of defects reported multiplied with hundred, like this. So the four kind of test metrics are there. Please subscribe my channel. More videos I'm going to provide on interview questions, manual testing, and the Java concept. Now I'm going next session is going to be Jira interview questions on manual testing. Java concepts also I'm going to introduce. Then I go for Selenium concepts. Thank you.